All right, now we're joined by our own Robert Crookshank, who's going to tell us to vote no on Initiative 1634. So go ahead with up to five minutes on why we should vote no. Yeah, thank you for allowing me this opportunity uh, to speak. Since uh, we're unable to get in contact with the official no on 1634 campaign, I'm happy to speak against Initiative 1634. Uh, Initiative 1634 would prevent any other local government in Washington state from passing any tax on sure sweetened beverages, uh, often known as a soda tax, but this also does include things like Red Bull, Monster Energy drinks, things like that. Any beverage that like relies on a lot of sugar uh, to be what it is. Uh, it would not in fact repeal Seattle's uh, sugar sweetened beverage tax, uh, which currently goes to fund a range of uh, education and health programs targeted for kids. Um, but what it would do is prevent that from ever going up uh, in any amount, uh, and it would prevent any other city in the state, whether it's Tacoma, Spokane, Shoreline, Wenatchee, Squim, whatever, from doing the same. Mm. And I think that that's the main argument against this. There are obviously a lot of discussions about is this the right policy approach, is this the right way to handle the issue of childhood obesity and public health, uh, but what this does is cut that discussion off the knees by saying you cannot ever pass this. Uh, to me, it makes sense as a question of basic democratic process and fairness to allow the voters and elected officials of a city to make that decision themselves. If, for example, Everett wanted to propose a sugar sweetened beverage tax, they should be able to do so. And if the voters of Vancouver decided to pass one or reject one, they should have the opportunity to do that as well, uh, just as Seattle has. What this initiative would do is basically say that only the city of Seattle can take any action to uh, tax these beverages and to use that revenue to fund programs to help children. No other city in the state would be able to do it. Uh, initiative 1634 was put on the ballot by the soda companies. Coca-Cola has donated $2 million in support of this initiative. PepsiCo has donated $1 million. Dr. Pepper has donated $750,000. Uh, and you can hear that in the ads. You know, I'll listen to the radio and sometimes hear the ads, which are very disingenuous, which make it sound like an overall grocery tax. Uh, which is not permissible in the state of Washington. The state of Washington prohibits uh, food, actual food, uh, bread, grains, um, milk, uh, salad, uh, actual food that you eat and consume, and water, including bottled water, uh, actually no, just water, uh, from being taxed. Uh, what is going on is the uh, soda companies are trying to use that as a attack on this initiative. They get uh, mom and pop grocers from parts of, uh, of the state, east and west, to say, oh, we are just happy little uh, mom and pop small businesses, and this grocery tax is terrible, we should prevent it from ever happening elsewhere in the state. Which is not really what this is about. It's not about grocery taxes. This is about taxes on sugar-sweetened beverages. The research is really clear that sugar-sweetened beverages are the main cause of childhood obesity, are a major cause of adult obesity, are a major cause of type 2 diabetes. Um, there is a clear public health argument for doing this. Now, even if you don't agree with that public health argument, even if you think that this should not happen, uh, again, I think it is a real problem for soda companies to come in, spend millions of dollars, and tell local governments and local voters they no longer have the decision uh, themselves. They can't decide. They can't choose. It's been decided for them by these uh, soda companies spending all this money. Uh, so those are the reasons why a large coalition, especially uh, public health organizations, uh, children's health organizations, uh, have banded together to try to stop this initiative. It's an uphill climb because there's a lot of money being spent uh, to pass it, but that is the reason I oppose it. Great, so we'll open it up to follow-up questions. Ben, you had a question? Yeah, uh, my understanding is that the soda tax is a regressive tax and that it hits lots of sugar drinks that um, lower-income folks drink but doesn't hit the Seattle soda tax, doesn't hit Starbucks beverages, things like that, coffee beverages. Um, if it's a regressive tax, why would we want more of that? I think that's a decision for elected officials and voters in every city of the state to make. Uh, I think that there is a case to do so because uh, the, the effect on public health is so severe the effect on children is so severe. But even if one were to disagree with that and say, actually, this is a regressive tax and we don't want it, make that decision yourself if you live in Shoreline or if you live in Moses Lake or if you live in Pullman, right? The soda companies are trying to come in and say, we want to make that decision for you. We want to take away that democratic opportunity. Um, 
Um, the Seattle uh, City Council went through a number of hearings on this. There was a big public process. Uh, they could have put it to the ballot. Um, so other cities could, in theory, before this initiative passes, put it to the ballot. And that's the way I would approach it, right? I think that uh, preemption laws that prevent cities from making these decisions for themselves are a real problem. Um, if one were to oppose the policy, then oppose the policy on its own grounds, say that this type of tax is inappropriate to pass and argue on that basis, rather than saying, no city anywhere can ever pass this. Uh, let's have that discussion city by city and let folks make their own decision. Thank you. Right, so I have one then, Sophia. So um, this initiative is not a referendum on the, the Seattle policy, but can you remind us what the Seattle policy is? What is it, what exactly is it taxing? And um, you know, what's the revenue being used for? So Seattle's sugar sweetened beverage tax uh, raises uh, taxes on uh, soda, um, but also energy drinks, any beverage that is sugar sweetened. Uh, so it's, it's things like Monster, Red Bull, and Red Bull of course is one of the companies that donated heavily to try to uh, pass this initiative. That money is being used for a few different services, uh, uh, services that go to fund uh, public health programs for children, also some education programs that help children. So there's an attempt to have a nexus there, right? This is not a pot of money the city has created and they're spending on all sorts of things that are unconnected to the question of public health and children's needs. It's very much intended to be at that nexus of these, uh, or to tax something that is marketed towards children, in particular, uh, that is, I think, inappropriate to market to children. Uh, but if that's going to be sold, I'm not saying you can't sell it, I'm not saying you can't buy it. Uh, but that money then will, the, the tax on that will be going to help address public health issues that those beverages cause. I guess I, I, I mean, I had a lot of the same concern that um, Ben had, uh, had raised that, you know, everything that I heard was that this is an extremely regressive tax. It's actually even more regressive than sales tax. Um, so as much as sales taxes are regressive, this particularly um, targets uh, low-income families. Um, they're going to pay twice as much as a high-income family, not twice uh, twice as much of a percentage, but actually as a straight dollar value, twice as much as a high-income family, and also that being a much larger portion of their income. It's extremely aggressive. It hits people of color. It, he it hits basically um, our lowest income population. On top of it, it's, it's sort of a shrinking tax base, so it's just not a very good tax. And it was actually passed without a vote. So I'm really confused when you're sort of trying to sort of say that you know, people should be allowed to vote. This was actually passed without a vote. People are now having an opportunity to vote on it. And there's no guarantee that the other city councils are actually going to put this to a vote. This might be the only chance they have to vote on it. So I guess I don't really understand the argument that this is somehow not a vote when it's literally a vote. So for uh, several years, uh, up until I think 2017, uh, 2016, 2017, when Seattle's proposal passed, there was actually a lot of discussion about putting this to the ballot in Seattle. Ultimately, they found enough support on the city council to not do that. Um, but I think this goes to the heart of the, of the democratic system. Um, do we want our city councils to be able to pass revenue uh, themselves without having to go to the voters, or should everything go to the ballot? Um, even if one were to say everything should go to the ballot, uh, this initiative forecloses that entirely. What it does is a single statewide vote and says we will, no city can ever pass. Right? You can't have a community discussion in any city around uh, the state, whether it's at the council level or at the ballot box in those cities. It's, an intent, it, it's clearly intended to just shut that discussion down. I think the points you make about it being regressive are, are compelling, and both, I've wrestled with that a lot. I remember when I first worked for the mayor uh, seven years ago and heard they were proposing it, my initial reaction was, was, was that a little regressive. And you look at the public health research, and this stuff is incredibly toxic, literally, to kids in particular, and it's marketed to kids. So I think there's a strong argument for passing it. What this initiative does is it shuts down that discussion. There is no discussion if this initiative passes. It's blocked everywhere except Seattle. Um, Tacoma can't have this, that discussion, ever can't have that discussion. In my view, the democratic process works best when that discussion can be had at the city council level or at the ballot box, whatever happens in each city. Um, and if this initiative fails, uh, anyone in these cities can still circulate signatures to uh, put a uh, sugar sweetened beverage tax on the ballot as a referendum. And those, uh, as we saw with head tax discussion here in Seattle, is not difficult. The, the, the bar for signatures to put a council decision on the ballot is really low. So you still have that opportunity. Okay, Jason. 
since when, when we're talking about a public health issue like the sugar tax, it reminds me that Seattle had previously banned indoor smoking and it also uh, taken the initiative on the plastic bag ban. If Seattle was allowed to do those things on their own, how, I'm trying to formulate this question, how is it that the state can say that Seattle cannot do one thing but permit other things? And I guess the other way I'd ask is, could the city or could the state of Washington tell Seattle that they could not ban indoor smoking? They could. They already tell Seattle that we can't ban guns in parks. Mm -hmm. They tell Seattle we can't ban sales of ammunition or guns, handguns. Uh, you know the the ban on guns in parks was litigated all the way to the state Supreme Court. The state Supreme Court said, sorry, the statute is really clear. Seattle doesn't have the power to do this. Um, and that's where I really object to 1634, is it is in that spirit of preemption laws. Right. To say that local governments should not have the power to do something. I really firmly believe that issues like this uh, should be decided locally. Uh, if it comes to a sugar sweetened beverage tax, Let's have that discussion city by city. I think that there may be different discussions happening in each city. I don't see a need on this particular topic for a one size fits all discussion. Especially when I think it's important to know that you have the big soda companies are the ones coming in opposing this. Um, I think there are legitimate questions to be asked about the effect of this tax, but it's not being, these questions are not being asked by the people who are paying that tax, right? It's not being asked by low income folks, it's being asked by some of the largest corporations in this country. Uh, who don't want this initiative because they are worried it eats into their profits. And I think that is an important aspect of this discussion too that really troubles me about this initiative being on the ballot in the first place. Okay. Um, so you mentioned that some of the big soda companies have come out against this initiative. Do you happen to know how they're spending, what other campaigns that they finance, like ideologically, why, why they would be wrong more often than not? I'm not sure what you mean. I mean like, are they investing in like crappy Republicans across the board, or are they investing in like moderates? Or like, oh yeah. Do you, do you have an idea about where their money? Yeah, goes? I mean, soda companies are are like a lot of other companies of that sort. Cable companies, you know, auto companies. They'll spread their contributions around between moderate Democrats and Republicans. That's usually their uh, their mo. Here and and so when you know when I worked in the mayor's office a few years back and we were talking about whether we wanted to do this. Uh, the number one reason that was, folks held off was they didn't want to waste taxpayer money having to go to the ballot to defend it. Um, because they knew the, the soda companies would come in and spend millions of dollars to try to defeat it. What they decided to do, I think they looked at polling and saw that it would uh, be upheld by Seattle voters and decided, well, we'll just go to the state level. We'll write off Seattle, that's fine, it is what it is, uh, but we'll make sure the rest of the state can't. Uh, and I think that's really interesting to me about the role of money in politics. I think there is clearly a robust discussion to be had, and I think it's a good one to be had about whether this is the right approach uh, to dealing with the childhood obesity epidemic in particular. But what these soda companies want to do is shut that discussion down because they're worried about their own profit, and I have a real problem with that. Um, <clears throat> um, the UK just is going to pass a sugar tax and even Mexico has a 10% on their sugar. Mm -hmm. Why do health officials and medical experts and doctors really support something like this? I love sugar. <laughs> I do. I love chocolate. I love cookies. I love that stuff. It's also really unhealthy. Um, sugar is, it's toxic. It's not toxic in the way that like truly horrific cancer causing things are toxic, but it is unhealthy for you. It will cause obesity. It causes uh, heart disease, it causes diabetes. It is something that should be consumed in much smaller amounts than it is. And I tell myself this every day before I open my package of cookies. And <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that this is, you know, where these soda companies are invested literally in imposing sugar on people. Right? They have gone to the federal government and used federal subsidies to buy corn that gets used, processed as high fructose corn syrup, and then it gets put into drinks, it gets put into food. Uh, right? You go to the store and you want to buy bread, and you'll see bread without high fructose corn syrup. You're like, I didn't know there's high fructose corn syrup in bread. Well, there's a reason for that. Right? These industries, their profit model, their business model, 
is getting the government to subsidize the production of sugar and sugar substitutes in uh, so much of what we eat and drink. And it caused a massive public health crisis. And what this Seattle's uh, sugar sweetened beverage tax attempts to do is to deal with the effect of that uh, public health crisis that has been created. And the soda companies are coming and saying, actually, no, you're screwing with our business model. We don't really care about the effect of our drinks. We want to make our money. And if you know kids get obese, so what? That's our business model, and don't mess with it. Let me have a follow-up question. How does this protect people of uh, low income and people of color and, and the poor? So I have to go back and look at exactly the specific programs and funds, but I know the city of Seattle has taken an effort to ensure that the programs that are funded target those communities and neighborhoods in terms of providing health services, supporting uh, public health programs, supporting alternatives, healthy eating. Um, you know, when I worked for the mayor, we had programs like Fresh Bucks that would allow people to use uh, their SNAP cards and, you know, WIC and other uh, public food assistance benefits at farmers markets. And it's always a struggle to get that funded. You know, taxes like these can help get that funded and help make it easier for communities across the city to find alternatives. Um, you know, there are some people who argue that we should just ban this outright. Why are you taxing? Just ban it. And I think there's something to be said for it. You know, if you want to choose to consume that, choose to consume it. Um, but keep in mind that there is, is a cost to doing so. I don't think the tax is onerous, um, right? It's not, it's, you're not doubling the price by any means. Uh, but it, it, the idea is, is to make people think, okay, are you really sure you want to do this? Uh, and if people decide to go ahead, there is a public effect on that. The, the health problems are severe and cities should be able to have the funding available to do that. Thank you. So Jason had mentioned uh, smoking indoors uh, before. How would you compare this to um, tobacco policy, say going back in time 10, 15, 20 years ago? Like what, could you make an analogy to what this would be like in the late 90s? Or I would very much make an analogy yeah. to that. I think, um, you know, in the late 90s, it was, we saw similar discussion. Um, a lot of states were coming to understand the ways in which the tobacco industry operated, that they'd had evidence all along, that their products were causing cancer, causing a massive public health crisis, that they were marketing to children, doing all this stuff, and they started to raise taxes. And the argument was, these taxes are regressive, this is a problem. Um, but those were often litigated at the ballot box. I remember being in California and, and cigarette taxes went to the ballot and they passed. And they passed overwhelmingly because people understood that there is a lot of value to this. I suspect, and I can't prove because I'm not in the rooms with these lobbyists and soda companies, that one of the reasons they want this statewide initiative is because they're worried that this would pass in other large cities in the state, Tacoma, Everett, Vancouver, Spokane. And that really troubles them. They worry that their business model is in trouble. Just the tobacco companies 15, 20 years ago saw their business model in trouble too. So I see this initiative as a way to just cut off what is a interesting to me public discussion uh, at the knees and say, nope, we're not gonna have this discussion anymore. Our business model is more important than your ability to decide this issue for yourselves. Do you know if there are other cities and states around the country that have similar taxes? So I know New York is one that has done that. And that was, it was one of the big ones where that happened several years the, ago. The city or the state? City. city. Okay. Yeah. We have time for maybe one more question. Anybody has one? Anybody? Anybody? Well, if you want to take up to 60 seconds for a closing statement. Sure. I think that um, you know the fact that the soda companies really want to spend this much money, I think, is a big red flag. I think that there are a lot of good points to be made on either side of the concept of a sugar sweetened beverage uh, tax. I think those arguments are best left to council chambers and ballot boxes, city by city, where communities can talk to each other about that, neighbors can talk to each other about that, make the weigh the pros and cons and make that decision, rather than have the soda companies come in, spend millions of dollars, and just cut that discussion off before cities around the state have been able to have it. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.